Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Blessings to you viewers. My name is Pastor Lester Lewis and I am your host for today's show, Ask the Messengers. This show is all about addictions and recovery, uh, providing information to you, the viewer, uh, whether you're struggling with an addiction or whether you may have someone in your family, or maybe you just simply want to know what is addiction and what's it all, what is it all about. And so today we have some information from real people sharing their real stories. And that's why the show is called Ask the Messengers, because they have a real message to deliver to each and every one of you. And so this is so important because we realize something is that there is a need for this type of programming. And so this show is not <laughs> scripted. Uh, this is real people sharing their real stories. And so we also want you to know uh, that you can contact us here at Ask the Messengers. The information is on the screen feel free to either go online or pick up the phone and call. We would love to hear from you and we'd love to hear your comments or your concerns that you may have regarding addictions. Listen, today's show, we've got a great show lined up. We're going to talk about the warning signs of someone who is addicted. And listen, <laughs> I believe that there are warning signs all over the place. There are stop signs, there are, there are construction signs. Sometimes we pay attention, sometimes we don't. Uh, but this show is all about acknowledging what those signs are so that we can know exactly when someone may be in the place of addiction. And so, listen, we want, we want you to take a look at this very quick clip, and we're going to show some information about uh, those who have been going through and addicted themselves, and now they, uh, as well, have a testimony to share. Uh, watch this, and we'll be right back. What was my drug of choice? Um opiates um, and uh, marijuana. How did active addiction affect my relationship with my family? It, uh, it tore my life apart, you know, made me do a lot of things and go against a lot of my morals and values that uh, growing up you'd never think you'd cross into those lines and you would like to separate yourself saying, oh, I would never do that. But when it comes, when you're in the grips of the disease, you end up going to bottoms and things you've never done before. Like, uh, you know, stealing money from my family or um, taking things out of the house or, you know, just telling all kinds of lies to go, to go get, to go pick up drugs. Just uh, the kind of stuff you have to do and the fast lifestyle, it just, it really consumes you. Getting high becomes a 24-hour job. And it, uh, it takes up all your time. And then when you do go to work to make a little bit of money, all you're thinking about is getting off of work and getting high. So then you do things uh, to get maybe get money some extra way from your work and start shooting moves inside of a place of business, you know, that's paying you good money to be there. But you are trying to see every extra way you can make a dollar out of there. Today with me on the show, uh, I've got a great guy, uh, someone who is absolutely uh, well-versed in uh, addictions and, and knows so much, and I'm so glad to have him here as, as a co-host today, uh, Mr. Leroy Carey. Leroy, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, uh, Pastor Lewis. Uh, it's good seeing you again. Uh, we are going to try to do uh, a little segment on uh, to help grandmothers and mothers right. and, and cousins and, and people that uh, have no idea what signs they might have to look for when uh, one of their loved ones might be addicted. Right. Uh, right. We have on the show today, I have Karen, right. uh, okay. who has 27 years of uninterrupted recovery in the recovery That's community. That's and That's I have Dwight, who is a very personal friend of mine who has a long term uh, in recovery. Uh, and uh, those are my guests today that's going to talk about 
these these warning signs. All right. Well, welcome to the show, guys. We, we we're excited about what you guys going to bring to the table today. And uh, Leroy, come on, let's let's get into this thing. You, man. you know, I, I needed to ask Karen uh, right right uh, quick. Uh, tell me some of the things that you saw in yourself before you got to realize that you had an addiction. Wow. I can remember, just like it was yesterday, uh, some of the things that happened with me. The change, first of all, with the relationships. You know, where I once had relationships from elementary, junior high, and high school, the, the, the good group of people, my relationships changed over to the other side of the tracks. Um, I started hanging out with people that my parents probably would never, they would have never approved of. And um, even hygiene. It even went to the physical hygiene where I really cared about how I looked and, you know, taking care of myself. And one of the things, another sign of my addiction, it did, I didn't care so much anymore. Leroy, I didn't care so much. Uh, all the way down to the felon in school, the skipping school, the lying to my parents, and then the stealing, the, man the manipulation, the alienation from family functions. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, Karen, let, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you say that when you started, was it, was it just trying to fit in? It or, was. Or, it was. Yeah. Actually, I've heard people over the years say that it's hereditary. I beg the difference. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Neither my mother or father were addicts. So, I mean, it's a, it's a choice that I made to fit in with the cool crowd. Right. Right. You know, the cool crowd. I was born and raised in a biracial home. My mom white, my dad black. So as a result of being called a lot of names like Oreo and half breed and things of that nature, I chose to get with the crowd that I can do bad with because then they'll respect me. Right, right. You know, they'll protect right. me. Right. And as a result, I start doing everything any and everybody else was doing. Because one of the things we talked about is that addiction start at any age. It does. Uh, I was and, uh, I was full blown uh, heroin addict at 14 years old. And see, we and, and and we have people right now, children, who are trying to fit in, and because of that, they're 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 possibly walking exactly. the path exactly. that you walked as well. Exactly, and, and I see it every day. I work in mental health, I work in substance abuse, and I see it every day. And if I could just get across and allow one child to get this message, mm. it would be just be yourself, be a, a leader, not a mm. follower. You know, um, you don't have to go the roads we went. You don't have to uh, be accepted. And it, it, today you call it peer pressure. You know, it's a lot of peer pressure. You don't have to be accepted. And I see the warning signs. I mean, it's close to as home in my family. Um, I have two 17-year-old grandkids and I have uh, brothers and sisters and at one time it's five of us siblings at one time and I'm talking years ago because my brother got what 30 years now um, at one time it was all five of us siblings in one room getting high mm. and we all looked at each other and said how did we get here wow. Wow. you know so the warning size is is is, is, is definitely there the white give us a, a little insight on the warning sign that you had uh, early in your recovery and early in your addiction that that uh that you can share with us well you know i was sitting here and i was thinking and i remember uh thinking that uh drugs would be the solution to my addiction and i didn't understand the difference between drugs and the addiction and how they had to how the drugs stopped uh, my thinking from the process of the addiction giving me thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. I always thought I could do what I wanted to do. And wherever that came from, I had a choice, but I changed my choices. I seen a lifestyle that I wanted, and I decided that I would live in that lifestyle. Uh, that's after being in the ministry. That's after going through a whole lot of stuff with God and mm -hmm. all of that. And what I really realized mm -hmm. was, guess what? I was in denial that God was God. Mm -hmm. So, so are you saying that you are in ministry? Yes. Serving God? Yes. And still, Not, and, and... Go ahead. And, 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 and addicted to drugs? Yes. Oh. Of course, I didn't stay there because I, you know, me and God, we got this thing going on. We ain't, this ain't gonna work out. And I don't want to be <laughs> walking around like this or something, you know. But I just, 
I, I wanted to say that because of the addiction, I use drugs. Mm. And, the addi and the addiction is a denial that anything's wrong with me. Everything I'm doing is okay. Mm. I can't see reality anymore. I'm starting to live in oblivion in my thinking. And when I take the drug, it brings me back to what's normal, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, the crowd I wanted to stick with was people that wasn't worried about what was normal. Mm -hmm. I was more familiar with what wasn't normal be, that became normal. And then I found out I had a drug addiction because the drug addiction was the only thing that could help the addiction by itself. But then I found out addiction and insanity runs, they parallel with each other. They need one another right. to function. Mm. Wow. Okay. Wow. You know, that, that's very interesting to, uh, to hear you say. See, people, uh, most laymans uh, who have never used drugs or anything will think that the addiction is immediately the drugs, mm -hmm. when it's really not. Addiction comes in all types of forms. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we want to uh, really uh, help with the grandmothers and tell them some of the warning signs that you might see uh, in in your child or even in your grandkids. Mm -hmm. What might what might you think, Karen, would be a good warning sign that your child or grandson or anybody mm -hmm. is using marijuana? A great warning sign would be a decrease in the grades, mm -hmm. uh, the schoolwork going down, mm -hmm. the lying. Things coming up out the house missing, like twenty dollars out mama grandma purse. Mm -hmm. um, the changing friends and relationships. Okay. The good kids, and now the parent or grandparent is noticing where are these people coming from. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think a warning sign off the rip would be like let it rip. The mm -hmm. grades going down. Mm -hmm. okay. The grades going down. Uh, Dwight, tell me uh, one one warning sign that is obvious that someone's using heroin. Mm. Can't trust them. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Under no circumstances. Listen, listen, <laughs> I, want to thank, I want to thank you guys really quickly. Listen, we're going to be right back. <laughs> listen, this conversation is wonderful, but we're going to be right back right after these messages. Sorry. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. Once again, I am your host, Pastor Lester Lewis. And listen, today we have been talking about the warning signs for addictions. And so listen, we're gonna go right back uh, to a few words uh, with this testimony. And once again, uh, this is powerful. Pay attention, watch this. The most scary moment in my drug use was overdosing. You don't even plan on it, you know. It was, it was such a small amount of drugs and it was obviously not what I thought it was. And I remember doing it and feeling good for about five seconds and then I hit the ground and I woke up in the back of an ambulance getting woken up, you know, telling, with them telling me I had just overdosed. And I remember waking up and crying. And I also remember, you know, being dead in that moment for about 15 minutes getting CPR and coming and seeing a light and uh, getting brought back to life and going to the hospital. I went into the hospital and they let me out 45 minutes later. And um, the real crazy thing about that is through that experience, like I said, until you become thoroughly beaten, you won't become willing. Even through that experience of overdosing and almost dying, I walked out of the hospital and went and got more drugs. 
Listen, we're back, and uh, Leroy and I are back with, with, our, with our guests, and we've been talking about the warning signs of addiction. I think we need to get right back into the conversation because we got so much going on here. You and, know, uh, you people know, need to know this information. Lewis, you know, Dwight, you made me uh, kind of laugh uh, when you said uh, just not trusting. It's more to it than that, am I correct? Well, I think after you tried everything you could, you see the distrust in their spirit, that they're not spiritually conscious of what they're doing. They're not showing up for what they need to show up for. You're looking at their health. You're looking at the changes in their words. You're looking at their mannerisms, which now confronts the spirit of my spirit to your spirit. And if I know what I'm doing is right and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right, then I understand that something's wrong. Now, I think that addiction changes the relationship completely between me and you or me and anybody. And once that happens, I isolate. I stay inside. I won't communicate. I won't say very much. I'll go to, I'll go to where I find my happiness is, is within myself and my thinking that tells me I'm thinking correctly. I don't need to talk to you because you don't understand me anyway. So tell, tell me, where did the term nodding come from? Where did that come from? It came from I'm satisfied. Right. <laughs> okay. So, so nodding. I'm not, if I can. If okay, I, can. Go, yeah. I think the, it also came from I found relief in what I believe. I don't have to listen to you. I, well, nodding is a physical sign that something is wrong, am I correct? You're absolutely right. Yeah. In, in a spiritual condition that makes it mentally possible for it to happen physically. You're going okay, to go lose. Back, go back again. Go back again. And, and, yeah, you're going to and, lose and, the song, Dwight. Okay. okay, well, let, let, me be, let me be more, more period, right? I don't like anybody. So I don't want to be around anybody. I want to isolate. When I'm nodding, I'm isolating. I've reached the ultimate high that I want to get to. Mm -hmm. I just heard the guy talk about he died. Mm -hmm. They brought him back in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. He was satisfied with that. He went back and used again. Right. So that's, that's what I mean. The f it's a threefold disease. I understand. And I also understand that it's important for me to remember that if I don't trust you, it's because I've done the best I can for you. And your actions are showing me what's going on with you. It's no longer what I think because my sympathy that I have for you, my love I have for you will over outweigh what I think. But when I know I can't trust you, now I'm, I'm not going to say naughty is not a sign that you've used drugs, but we said addiction and drugs go together. That's all I was saying. All right. I, I hope I didn't lose you, you know, you know, You know, Karen, uh, Tell me something. You know, I used cocaine for a long time. Uh, fortunately, God blessed me and brought me out of that. Tell me some of the warning signs of people that use cocaine. Wow, where do I start? <laughs> the warning signs of cocaine. First of all, cocaine is what we know, what we use the term of upper. Mm -hmm. uh, cocaine has you very hyper. And one is too many, and a thousand is never enough. You can't get enough. So, so, so upper, so upper, upper means upper acid. It, it, it you, when he, uh, when they talked, right? When they talked about nodding, right. that's a direct result of opiate of heroin that have you down. Mm -hmm. So cocaine is the opposite; it has you up. Okay. One of the warning signs of using cocaine would be extra hyper, extra hyper. Um, Stilling is a warning sign, once again, because you need more and more. Uh, lying, um, not showing up for no functions, and just, just on the go, just can't sit still. You know, because the cocaine, the war you would, I would have red flags up if my child, lack of sleep, very much so a lack of sleep. Once again, number one, grades drop not interested in nothing that they used to be interested in. Mm. I was on cocaine and when I was, my interests and my friends and my relationship all changed. You know, that is very interesting yeah. to, uh, to hear that because I know for a fact that anybody that uses cocaine is not gonna tell the truth. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, you know, uh, that, that is a good sign mm -hmm. that if you catch them in numerous lies, uh, they probably, that's a, probably a sign Morning that they're sign. probably using something 
that they have no business. But uh, tell me some of the things that uh, that's happened to you. Had you have you ever? had to help somebody after you've seen the warning sign? Oh, God, my son. My, it happened right in my own house with alcohol, the warning signs. Okay. Uh, mm. You know, most of the time when children go to college, mm. he didn't have that strength that I thought that he had, but he got it now. But he mm. did feed into it, I had to help. I would help thousands of women thousands of people everywhere on my job in certain programs and stuff like that, but I could not help my own son. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to go to God and ask him, what do I do? I could hug and love you and help you and guide you, but mm -hmm. when it came to my son, like, Ma, you're not my sponsor. Ma, you're not my mm -hmm. minister, you know. So I've had to help several people, and let me tell you something, you have to be open-minded mm -hmm. to the addictions. Okay. You have to be open in order to help somebody. You have to love somebody until they love themselves. Okay. It's not easy, but you have to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dwight, we, we winding down uh, real quickly. Have you, have you ever had to help someone in your home? Yes, uh, actually, uh, my brother, uh, which is now in the process, it, it has worked for him for, mm. for 14 years. Mm. Uh, he was in the bathtub, and I remember we had to run in the house and take ice and, and, and take his clothes off, throw him in the tub, and he was blue in the face, and uh, we had to bring him back, and his, the guy was talking about the EMS wagon, right? So when EMS came in, and he woke up, and he said, he said, uh, what's, what, where am I at? He said, uh, he said, you just, you just died. I said, he said, well, okay. He said, well, okay, uh, can I have my dough back? <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, so, but, Dwight. but, but through the. Thank you. Okay. Listen, we are, this, this conversation could obviously continue, but listen, we, we're, 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 we're now at the place where we, we've got to go. We want to thank our guests so much for thank all their comments, for everything, for the information they've given. Amen. Pray that it will help someone. And certainly, Leroy, thank you so much for being here and directing us. And listen, we're going to be right back with the final comments in just one moment. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. God's World, a Detroit institution that rushed seven mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We need your financial support to keep this program on the air. Would you please send your tax deductible donation to Greater Love Christian Center. Attention, Ask the Messengers. 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan 48235. And for online donations, please visit our website at www dot askthemessengers.com and we're back now for our final comments uh listen today's show as we've been talking about warning signs Leroy man listen you know we talk about signs and how we ought to pay attention to those signs and you don't want to walk out into a, a, a traffic and the sign says stop uh, but there are people who sometimes they see the signs but they keep they don't they don't pay attention um you know wh what can we give the, the people in these final moments that they can take home with them. You, you know, uh, really what I wanted to say is there are many signs of addiction, but that is all conquered by love. Yes, if, okay. if I love the person 
that I am trying to help, then love will conquer all along with the grace of God. So, you know, I am really excited about what our guests talked about. I'm excited about the uh, addiction itself, uh, learning that it's not just drugs. Right. You know, you can be addicted to a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I'm just real grateful that I was here today uh, and had some fantastic guests. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and that's, and that's we, one of the things, we, you know, we talk about, you know, it, addiction can happen at any age. That's right. Uh, it can happen to anyone at any walk of life. So it doesn't matter uh, if, if, you, if you are well off or if you, if you are destitute, uh, that you still have a, a chance that you can find yourself in addiction. And so just to give the information uh, and, and also to know that, hey, if grandma or, or mama is, is trying to find or discover how can I help my babies, uh, you know, that, that we, this information can at least open the door of conversation, can at least help them to, to point them in the right direction to kind of make sure they begin the process of doing so, man. That's so, exactly right, yeah. Pastor, and thank you. Hey, Amen. Thank you. Listen, we are so excited again about this show, Ask the Messengers. But listen, we, are, we absolutely, positively need your support in helping to keep on coming to you with this show. Uh, the information is there on the screen. Feel free, any donation of any kind uh, would, be, would be absolutely wonderfully received. And, we, and I want you to know that whatever you give, and no matter what amount, it helps this show to continue going and to give information, uh, not only to those who may be struggling with addiction, but also those who, who have family members who they really want to help. So th there's a quick story uh, before we end, end this with prayer. There's a quick story in the Bible, and you know it, uh, Jesus Christ. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now whoever believes in him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. It also says that whom the son set free is free indeed. And so the moral of all of that is simply this. Jesus Christ came and gave his life not only for those who are uh, in, in, in just sin, as we know, but also in addictions because he also came to set them free. And I also know this, is that the Bible says that he was crucified, but he also rose again with all power in his hand. And so if your, if your issue is not bigger than a dead Jesus, then you ain't got no issues. And God is able to set you free. And so we thank God so much. We're going to close with prayer because we want to give God the last word. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you are able to release and set free those who are struggling. We release your power, your love, your grace to those right now. And Lord, we thank you that you're able to do exceeding abundant above all we can ask for or think of in Jesus' name.